What's going on, Gorilla Grills Nation? How's everybody doing out there? I am super, super, super stoked today. With us is my longtime partner in crime. Don't worry, despite his looks, he is not a convicted felon. All right, <laughs> Ollie, my brother, my man, and my man, my brother of the fire. This guy and I have cooked so many rushes together. We spent a lot of time in the kitchen. We have shared many a beer together, cut ourselves, shared many a burn, oh. cooked a lot. How many thousands of people have you and I cooked for, bro? Uh, over 10, easy. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I mean, just the shifts alone we did. Oh, Private right. dinners, catering. Whole nine yards. Um, yeah. So, here we are. I'm not going to say anything about his food because his food speaks for itself. And he knows what he's talking about. I'm going to kick it over to him. He's going to do some awesome kind of fun ideas for Labor Day for you. And uh, I'll, I'll just be around, guys. This isn't about me today. Let's do it, brother. All right, guys. Today, we are going to do what I call chicken lollipops. Nothing new. I didn't create it, but it is really awesome and a fun way to eat chicken. Um, I mostly eat chicken thighs. The reason I don't eat chicken legs very often is because I'm going to show you right here runs a whole bunch of tendons. So usually I eat this much of the meat, you get to that point, you don't want to eat anything else. So I'm going to show you a cool way to get rid of those tendons, French this bone out, it's going to look really cool. So let's start, we're going to go down about right where that meat is, just above it. So when you say French that out, that's, that's this process we're talking about, right? We're it is. The chicken legs, it's just a, um, a chef way of saying getting rid of any meat, fat, or tendon. Right on. A lamb bone, chicken bone. And I'll show you the easiest way of doing that. Cool. Awesome. So we'll make that decision right atop that meat right there. Let's keep going around it. Just grab a paring knife. A sharp paring knife is all you need. I'll keep going around. And then you'll get in there like this. Pick it up. And I'll just start pushing. And I'll scrape. Oh, nice. Now you can see all these things here. That's the stuff that will be left on there. That you can't cook away. You cannot braise it away. You can't. Can't eat it. Yeah, it's every time I eat chicken, I, I like chicken legs just fine. But like that, you're right. You get down to this part, and I don't know. It's not. It's not that it's horrible, but it's certainly not appetizing. No, that's so, for sure. exactly. So I'll just you're grab right? that meat like that. Grab your knife, and literally just scrape. And you can watch that whole bone come clean. Then we get to the bottom. Just cut. I'm a little quick because I've done thousands and thousands of uh, Frenching <laughs> in the kitchen, but this is way more fun, you know, to be at home and uh, doing something like this for like all your guests, your family. You can do a pack of 12 of these, nine, you know what I mean? But and, it's super uh, impressive, too, when it comes out and it's all like presented like and that. It looks, You're kind of passing it around, you know, to all your definitely. guests. Definitely. That's pretty bad. You know, I, I think that's pretty cool, personally. It is, and it's something, again, that doesn't really take that much work. At this point, if you do a couple, you'll get really fast at it. And uh, from here, what I'll do is I'll rub. And I'll grab our, uh, the what to club. Works great, obviously it's for chicken. And for this application, it's perfect. It's simple, it's delicious. I go liberal. Wait, just a rub, right? We're not doing any sauce or anything like that today? Nope, perfect. just the rub on this. Nice. I think that's all we really need, to be yeah. honest with you. Awesome because we're also gonna sauce it. So from here, we'll go to the silver back. I got it at 325, nothing higher than 350. And something these size, if you get this size, you're looking at it probably about 40 minutes on a cook. Um, everyone usually goes about 165 on chicken. Since they're legs, there's a bit more tendon, there's a bit more tougher meat. I go to more about 175, 180 on legs, just to get a little bit more tender. And again, they should stand right up for you too, which is great. So yeah, we'll close that lid. After that, like I said, use the thermometer if you need to. If you don't, just check it. Push it, cut it, whatever you need to do. And the next step will be saucing it, putting it back on. So this is after about 40, 45 minutes. Oh, that's perfect. And Look you how can, beautiful that color is on there. I'm telling you, that's that power of that silverback. I mean, you yep. can eat those just like that if you wanted to. If you don't want to sauce them, you can have sauce on the side for people that don't like sauce, obviously. And today what I did is I used a little bit of mix. I went 50-50. I went with the, uh, the Carolina style, that mustard base, the thick and bold. Pretty much 50-50. Mix it up. And what I'll do, open that smoker back up, and I will just literally fuck it in. Almost like a caramel apple with chicken, you know? Right. Like a barbecue caramel apple, you know? <laughs> And it's great too because the silverback, especially this part, it just stays so consistent. It does. It stays so consistent. It's just going to caramelize this beautifully it on the is. outside. So it's going to keep the integrity of the, the meat the way you want it cooked on the inside. 100%. Just that constant, constant uh, 
main, uh, maintenance and temperature, actually. And that's why I love this thing. It's it's awesome. And again, these chicken lollipops, honestly, 40, no more than 45 minutes. It's quick. By that time, you can roll into something else, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, I'm sure most of you out there have had, like, Mexican street corn. Yeah. Um, great summer thing. Corn's still really good right now with right. farms. And... Um, I know you guys like jalapeno poppers here. I've seen some videos you actually have. Oh, yeah. Like trays for that. Yeah. So I thought, why not make a jalapeno popper street corn? So, Dude, that's awesome. Are you serious? Yeah, it's going to pair well with this chicken, I think. And I'm uh, not shocked at all that you came up with that idea. <laughs> um, so we'll roll right into that right now. It'll be really fun. Simple. Just a few ingredients are different than a uh, traditional uh, street corn. But it will have all the elements, all the flavors of jalapeno popper. So what you have, a jalapeno popper usually is sour cream base stuffed in it. Um, I like to wrap it in bacon. I know you guys oh, are yeah. uh, into bacon around here as well. <laughs> so what I did is I just took some basic panko breadcrumbs, I threw them in the pan, toasted them, chopped up some bacon, and I roasted some jalapenos. That's kind of the jalapeno popper base. So when you're roasting the jalapenos, what'd you just, uh, how'd you do that? Um, I actually threw one of you guys' primate. Oh, the primate, right? Yes, the gas grill. Right on. Just Nothing else. Charred them up. Charred them up. Took about oh, 15 perfect. minutes. Awesome. Just keep flipping them and flipping them until they get nice and black. Nice. Peel the skin off and diced them. Perfect. So right here we have, I think, all the elements of what a jalapeno popper tastes like. You got bacon. You got jalapenos. Um, you got breadcrumbs. You fry them usually, you know? Yeah. So real quick to make that, uh, if you're eating regular street corn, it's usually like a, like a mayonnaise or a crema they'll put on the corn. Yeah. So, but we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna do sour cream. I'm sorry, that was cream cheese. This is sour cream. And you, uh, you, I'm pretty sure, you, did you bring that uh, cream cheese up to room temperature before you got started? Yes, thank you, Drew. Yep. Most definitely, because it won't be able to spread, you won't be able to stir it, so. What's that, just a couple hours on the That's you know, it, just throw it in your counter, counter, you're good to go. Yeah. Next up, some salt, some pepper, and then some usual suspects, suspects in this kind of cooking. I've got some ancho chili. You can use chipotle, you can use anything you want. You can omit it if you don't want to. I got some chili powder because why not? Yeah, it's barbecue, you gotta have a little chili powder exactly. in the mix, man. Paprika is always on our shelves with barbecue for making rubs. Oh, making, for sure. You know. And then here, right here, I usually use like oregano. But today I just decided like, why not grab something that's got oregano, it's got oil, it's got all the things I would want in one tube. So it's super easy to buy, easy to use. And I'll do about a fat tablespoon of that. Nice. And that stuff, I, I've been using it lately, too, and it's great. It's, I just got this at a local grocery store. I mean, you turned right me on to it. it yeah, so. it's right where all your fresh herbs are found, so super easy to find out there at Grill Nation. If you're looking for it, they have all kinds of stuff, too, so really, really convenient. It is, and it's got kind of everything you want. You know? Yeah, for sure. And all I do is with a mix. Super, super easy. And also, I'll show you some corn. The corn, I didn't show you how to grill corn because I think you guys can grill corn out there, hopefully. <laughs> if not, uh, um, I If mean, not, uh, you know, Chef Drew is really grilled. guy's going to say, hey, Drew, he'll, uh, he'll let no, you no know. No worries. We'll take care I of it. I won't pick on you too much, but uh, <laughs> feel free to come over at Cost Extra. Oh, nice. Um, so, again, again. that was a primate, too, wasn't that it? That was a primate. Same time, I threw the jalapenos down. Right on. And right here, I'm going to show you guys. You knew, Drew, you know this, though. That looks burnt. It's not. It's not at all. That is just caramelization. And what I'll do sometimes is I'll get like one side like that and then leave some like this. So you get a contrast of flavor. You get that just grilled flavor. You get that nice char flavor. And I'm like, uh, quite honestly, this is becoming one of my favorite grills. Is that uh, the primate? primate? Yeah, oh, man. yeah. Well, think about it this I way. Cooked the bacon under you cooked too. your bacon on the, you get, so you did your jalapenos, you did your corn on the primate, the griddle, or the, yep. uh, the grill grates. And then you turn around and <clears throat> you use the, uh, the griddle to cook your bacon all at the it. same time. Boom, yes. boom, boom. No ovens. Nice and easy. No crock pots, none of that crap. Nope. We were just, everything we did on two things, a smoker yep. and a primate. And from here, it doesn't get much easier. You put as little or as much as you want. All this does pretty much is for is a binder to get that to stick. I like to go kind of liberal because it binds well, but it also tastes great. I was about to say, that's probably half the battle right there oh, for that bad boy. so good. It looks delicious. And then really, all we'll do is I'll dunk that in there. And the reason why I kind of got it in a pan is you can just do this. Beautiful. I mean, Dang, dude. easy, no mess. You got everything you would want in a jalapeno popper, I think. And you also have some really delicious corn. Dude, this is a great idea. That's why I miss cooking with you, man. You always it's, come up with the coolest ideas like this. And again, you and, know, you know, it's 
it's nice too because it's easy. Anybody can do this. I mean, <coughs> oh, for sure. You got corn. You got the ingredients. It's nothing we couldn't find at the store. And uh, you know, when you called me up, you're like, hey, you got any ideas for an easy Labor Day? I'm like, yeah, I think I can do that. <laughs> and uh, so after that, I can know. Well, after that's glazed, when we put on earlier, that chicken's probably 10 minutes. Yeah, 15 most. You don't want to burn it because there's sugars in that sauce. It's really easy, and uh, we'll show you the finished product. What do you think, Drew? You ready for that? I'm ready. Right, I've been ready since you got started, man. Let's, I haven't seen this yet. Let's do it, Lance. I'm a little late to the rodeo. I think here. it's pretty cool. We'll do a little review here. Reveal. You wipe down. And as Drew would say, the power of television. Booyah! This is what you're gonna have. No, that's what I'm talking about. And folks, you saw me do this. That is super easy. Again, it's the chicken. Once you learn how to do that. After nine of them, yeah. <laughs> you'll get good at it, and it's not hard. And you got what, uh, cilantro in here? Yep, I just finished with some cilantro. Also some limes because, again, this goes well with kind of everything we're doing, so I just like to take some lime. I like lime a lot. I love citrus. I know you yeah. do too. Oh, Putting yeah. acid Every, in everything. things it's so brings good. out other flavors. Yeah, as we always say, acid not only has its own flavor, like lemons and limes or anything else, it also accentuates flavors. It, does. it brings other flavors of there 100%. all the way up to the top of the flavor profile in your palate. So. Well, it's kind of like... When people say fat's flavor, to be honest with you, it's not. Fat carries flavor. Right, exactly. Fat pushes flavor in your mouth. So the same thing with the citrus. And uh, I think Drew's got a really cool drink. I love to drink these drinks. And uh, Drew's just way better at making than I am. So let's do um, it. And after that, we're going to have to have a bite of that. I can't, I can't just oh. sit there and stare at that. I think we should. All right, guys. So what we did or what we decided to do when we were chatting about what, what uh, Sam was going to make today, he uh, suggested that I do a michelada, and I said this was absolutely perfect pairing, so that's what we're going to do, guys. Essentially what this is, it's a Bloody Mary, but with beer in it, all right? It's actually great for Labor Day, because we all know you're going to hit it hard this weekend. <laughs> you want a little something the next day to kind of, you know, recharge the batteries, you can do that, but it's not as harsh as a Bloody would be with that vodka. It's going to have some beer in there. Uh, you can make this lots of different ways, and we're just going to go super traditional today, all right? First thing we're going to do, guys, Gonna take a glass, 16 to 17 ounce glass. I'm gonna fill it with ice. All right, a little hot out here, so we get rid of some of this water. There we go. Fill that straight up. All right. And actually, I'm gonna digress because I forgot the coolest part of this entire process. All right. We got <laughs> this, this. Is why I like it, man. Right All here right. with your cocktails. We're gonna do a little bit of tahini, guys. And if you remember, recently we did some. Uh, actually, we did some smoked chicken. And we, uh, we tossed it with some oil and some tahini, and it's really, really good. Super citrusy, as we were just talking about. Yeah. It's got some really cool, like, citrus notes, uh, but it's also got a little kick of spice to it. So It'll pair for this. so well with that corn, too. I mean. Oh, yeah. You gotta put this on the corn if you want it. <laughs> yeah. So we're just getting a little bit of lime around our rim here, guys. Nice and easy. Just throw that there. Just do it like we would a margarita. When I used to live down in Texas, this was super, super common. People love to have tahini on the... Uh, on the rim of their uh, margaritas. It also goes super well on things like mango. Oh yeah, the regular mango. Fruits like that, really cool. All right guys, let's try this again, shall we? Got a little bit of ice. There we are. We're gonna get nice and full of ice there. And the next thing we're gonna do, done, is we are going to put a little bit of Bloody Mary mix in there. Now guys, you can use a ton of, you can use Clamato juice, you can use regular tomato juice with some lime and some hot sauce and things of that nature. For my purposes, for this particular drink, I just like to use a high quality Bloody Mary mix. In this case, I'm using McClure's. Ah. I love that because it's made right Keep here local. in Michigan from yes. Detroit. Also, uh, another company uh, out in Brooklyn, New York. So yes. I used to live in Brooklyn and now I live in, in Michigan, so it's kind of that. The pickles are good too. That double whammy. Yeah, they're good. So get a little love to, to all the spots from my universe. Yes. And we fill this about halfway up. Again, guys, this is not a super aggressive drink as it comes to our alcohol. We're just putting a little yeah. bit of beer on the top of here. A touch of hot sauce, just because this is Grilla Grills Nation and we like things spicy. Yeah. Would well, this work with a hangover? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. I may or may not know that from <laughs> vast experience. All right, guys, and then we're just going to use a little uh, beer, in this case, Modelo beer. You can use Negro Modelo for a little bit more flavor profile. You can use Corona, you can use Tecate, you can use a million of them, but we're going with just the standard Modelo today. Yeah, that's exactly what I had in my head. Right? Just the top there. I just kind of shake it. Just this a is my bit. first time with the tahini. Really? Yeah. That shocks me, dude. I know. I've seen it. You know more about food than it. I do. Have you never had tahini? <laughs> I don't know. All right. And I'm just going to give this a quick stir. 
All right, just to incorporate, we're not going to go crazy. We don't need to do that whole 10 second thing we're always talking about. We're just going to incorporate right. these ingredients. Do a little bit of a lime garnish. And a cheers. All Dude, right. This looks Brother, chiller. That cheers, looks man. great, my man. Thanks for having me. Cheers, guys. Cheers to you. I got to try one bite of this before we mm -hmm. sign off. It's too good not to try it. Oh, man. That's good, right? That is so good. I'm telling you. Dude, mm. get out of here. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Dude, that's insane. That was really good. Real good. Listen, I'm not just exaggerating here. That's absolutely delicious. Oh. And for your Labor Day get together, there's nothing here. You can't just run out. Sorry. It's too good. I got everywhere. <laughs> you can't just read this run out. Just get this stuff at the store. Guaranteed they're going to have everything that we have here. Everything. Any questions, Chef Drew at GorillaGrills.com. I will answer them for you. I'm going to get this awesome recipe from uh, Chef Ali before he leaves today. I'm going to have those posted for you very, very quickly. So if you have any questions, you can also go to GorillaGrills.com and you can reference a recipe there if, in fact, you do want to knock this out for your friends and family over the Labor Day. Brother, thank you so much Dude, for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it's it. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you guys As out always, there. As always, like, share, subscribe. Thank you, Chef Ali. No on problem. The smoke, and we'll see you guys soon.